Hey, what's going on? And in this video, we're going to look at Navigraph charts for flight planning purposes. So you may have already seen our video from last week. If not, I'll stick a link up here somewhere. Uh, definitely go check that out. We talked about the moving map, setting it up, making it work, and also uh, updating nav data. We talked a little bit about the flight planning, but not enough. So I was like, you know what? We'll make another video. So let's just talk about flight planning, how that works using Navigraph charts. So if you haven't already used this, uh, then I think you'll find it to be a lot like for flight mobile. Um, if not, that's cool too. Do keep in mind, this is for flight simulation, not real world flying. Don't get Navigraph charts and expect to use this out in the real world. That's not what this is for, um, but it's going to be close enough. It's using real world data. It's using actual charts, VFR sectionals, IFR charts. It's using all this stuff that you would use in the real world and it's kept up to date which is the coolest part of it all. That's what we're gonna look at today. We're just gonna go through and create a quick flight plan and I'll show you how to be able to install that into X-Plane. It also, uh, you can also export a file and export it to uh, for use with the Garmin GPS inside of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. So let's take a quick look and see how this works. So you're gonna jump in, make sure that you've logged in. I'm using the cloud version of Navigraph charts, uh, but you can also download it and just load it up on your computer and uh, have it right there ready to go. Uh, you probably just have to update it every now and then. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here is we're gonna look at a flight plan. So if you're not already seeing this bar up at the top where it says enter text route, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is click over here on flights. I'm gonna say new flight, <laughs> all right? And that's gonna bring up that text route. So two different ways that you can do this. You can just type in your route if you already know it. Say you're going uh, Kalamazoo also use uh, the K in front of it if you're in the US um, the international identifier so K is the otherwise you might end up at who knows where so just be specific about where it is that you're flying KAZO you can also do intersections waypoints uh, intersections any point that will show up on the on the map I'm just going to use airports um, KJXN KGRR uh, 8 Delta 4 which is a small airport near Grand Rapids and K Cadillac. So that's our flight plan right there, right? So what if we do that and we click done, then what it's gonna do, it's gonna create that flight plan for us. It'll actually give you the cardinal directions and uh, how, the, how far the distance is between here. So that's pretty cool. If you're flying, you got the moving map, you know approximately how far your, your legs are and whether you should hopefully have a good idea of whether it's gonna be a safe idea to make these flights going leg to leg and get to where it is that you're going. Um, so let's look at uh, whether or not this is needed. Do we need to go to Jackson? Maybe we just go north. Maybe I want to move this somewhere else. You just hold it and uh, put it right there. So maybe we want to come up here and then uh, it, it should have that information there. Now, whatever you put at the beginning and whatever you put at the end are going to be your starting and end points. That's going to be your uh, origin and your destination. They're automatically going to be put in there. Down here at the bottom, it's got a pin board. So uh, whatever those airports are, it's going to give you uh, departure information, airport information, taxi diagrams. They're going to be down here uh, at the bottom for the, ori the origination airport and wherever it is that you're flying. So those are going to be pinned for easy access. You can get access to frequencies, the airport diagram, and you'll also have the moving map. So you'll be able to see where you're at on that particular airport, which is also really cool. Um, if you need to annotate or just kind of visualize how am I going to make this approach once I get here, we're flying to the north, maybe we'll come in here to a teardrop, enter, this is a really bad drawing, but the downwind, and then come in here. Maybe you just need to visualize how that's going to look. That's a great place to do that. Um, I'm going to clear that before somebody looks at it. And then uh, that's how that would work though. Um, you can also pull up the, uh, the charts for a particular airport. So if you're like, okay, um, we have... Uh, Cadillac Airport here. You can look at the weather, grab your ATIS information if they have it. Uh, you can also pull up information for like Pilot Edge if you're flying in Pilot Edge. Uh, this only works more, more so in the Western United States side. Pilot Edge is not reporting for Michigan, so you're not going to find that. But you can pull up real life ATIS if they had it. Uh, and METAR, they don't have an ATIS, they have a AWOS. Um, so they do have a METAR that is automatically being generated. So you can look at that here and just get an idea of what the weather looks like, whether or not you want to uh, go into these airports and, and try this. 
Now, the procedures, you could pull up, click on the procedures and get an idea of what that looks like. Maybe you want to attempt with that nice northerly uh, wind. Uh, maybe you want to try a good crosswind landing doing an ILS runway 07. So we're going to click on that and uh, we can look at that chart. We can pull that up and go, yep, that looks cool. I want that to be definitely available to me for when I get within uh, proximity of that airport. And I want to be able to brief this approach. I want to be able to bring up all of this information so that I know what I'm doing. Obviously, be familiar with the approach. Don't try to become familiar with this while you're on the approach. It's probably not the best time to start figuring it out. But, you know, sometimes you get diverted. Sometimes uh, you do need to figure it out on the fly. Um, but the more familiar you can be with an approach ahead of time, probably the better, right? Where I was going with all that was uh, that you can click on the pin up here and uh, just click that and it will now pin that information to your pin board as well. So, so what we're going to do here is export this, right? And we want to go through all these different formats and see what's available to us. And we're going to come down here where X-Plane is. Uh, if you look in here, there's all kinds of different aircraft all different kinds of GPSs that you can export these for that will work in different types of aircraft. So make sure you can find what it is that you're looking for and what you want to export this to. Um, for me, this works pretty good with a X plane 11 or 12, and it's going to be a file type of an FMS. So I'm going to click on that. And that was it actually, it just downloaded. I'm actually going to go over, I'm going to show you exactly where to put that file and we're going to go to my X-Plane. Actually, we're going to go to my downloads folders. I'm going to grab that file, which is real quick, uh, real easy. It's called Kazoo KCAD. All right, so I'm going to copy that. We're going to go to my X-Plane folder. We're going to go to output, and we're going to go to FMS plans. All right, I've got a few other things in here already. I'm actually going to get rid of these so we don't have any confusion. And then I'm going to... Uh, drop that in there. So that is now the only thing that I have. Now from here, what we can do is just open up X-Plane 11. All right, so we are now all loaded up inside of X-Plane. So on, uh, let's look at, uh, so it looks like broadcast flight data to the server successfully. So we should be good. If I want to retrieve the flight data, I now have that information. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, and now I'm going to click on this button right here which should center me up in the uh, Kalamazoo area, which it looks like it did. All right, so we now have information for our exact location. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can now get everything set up in the cockpit. Let's say we've gone through our startup procedures. The aircraft's already started. We're getting ready to take off. We're going to run over these other uh, two Cessnas out here. We're going to have to make a really tight turn, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to pull up the, uh, the GPS, uh, pull up the flight plan, I'm going to overwrite this, be able to go to the middle button and pull up this. And that's the one that we just used. And I'm going to click on enter. AZO to 9 Delta 9, Grand Rapids 8 Delta 4 to KCAD. So that's the flight. We're just going to make sure that is the correct flight. So we're ready to go. That's how flight planning works with Navigraph. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There's a lot of other ways that you can use that and other ways to uh, plan flights and a lot more things that you can add to that pin board. So a lot of functionality there, much more than I can put into this one video. But overall, um, I, I like it. I like how that works. I like the similarities to ForeFlight. And uh, just, you, you know, if you're going to be uh, flying in real life, I would say maybe just get ForeFlight and you can actually use that with moving maps as well. Um, but if, if you're a flight sim enthusiast and that's your thing, if you're going to be in your basement like me <laughs> hanging out doing flight simming, Navigraph is where it's at, and I, I think these guys are really going to have a cornerstone on uh, flight planning, nav updates, moving maps. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in another video. Take care. All right, see you.